G'day, I'm Ash. This is the Jaguar A. And before I get into any details about why or how come, let's just say that I'm not exactly the best uh, or necessarily the greatest jet pilot out there. So we're going to attempt today to see if we can actually make this thing work. If not, we're going to have a bit of a trouble. Now, this is the French version. There is a British version, which I have yet to unlock. If I go down to the bottom of my British tech tree, I'm still unlocking the Jaguar GR1. I did pick up the Lightning recently, however, that'll probably be a separate video considering now that 9.7 isn't capped at 9.7, that battle rating. 9.7s can now see 10.0s and 10.3s just as easily as before, so I wish you luck all those people who don't have a vehicle that can perform at that particular battle rating, or who have stock vehicles because you're going to get shoved into top tier matches relatively quickly. Regardless, a Jaguar A, right, 10.0, rank 6. Or is it rank seven? I can't count. It's definitely rank six because there's only six ranks. Uh, this is the French version. 30 millimeter tapers, you know, 300 rounds. So the guns are lower mounted than you, you'd rather expect. And so shooting these things can be a bit of a problem. But overall, the vehicle feels like a, a T2. And that's surprising because the T2 was added so long ago. I can't even remember. In fact, one of my most favorite videos is me playing the T2 with Mike Goes Boom, another creator who now works for Gaussian, ironically. Um, and we had a bunch of fun in that. But in the current meta, this thing doesn't do so well. So we're going to see how that works. Armor-wise, there's no armor protection. X-ray, it is basically just a sweat wing jet fighter. There is no real need to explain everything. This is basically, you've got two Rolls-Royce engines in the back there. Uh, max speed of 1600, although you can push it a little bit. Again, it doesn't really matter. The thing is highly maneuverable. Although that won't matter in the end either. So again, we're going to attempt to do this today. So join me on my adventure of trying to make the Jaguar at least usable. Making the Jaguar usable is going to be a hard thing because one could argue, obviously, that there is a bunch of compression at top end. And Gaussian statistics, according to unnamed sources, suggest that majority of the players are at rank 4, 5 and 6 makes sense that's where the majority of people are that's where the majority of people will be grinding because that's where you hit the grind wall or thunder when you pass tier three well excluding naval we don't talk about naval the grind becomes exponentially greater therefore you have to spend more time in those vehicles so therefore you start to see problems with a world war ii game that now has advanced systems in the game now you could argue that the mantra missiles themselves are particularly fantastic on this thing but even if, if you decrease the battle rating of this particular vehicle, it'll absolutely shred everything, even at a 9.7. And as you see, 9.7 battle rating doesn't really mean anything at this point in time either, because they basically removed the requirement for 9.7s to really uh, be in their own bracket, or should I say tiering. I have a feeling that's because of the complaints around the, the lightning, although it's debated whether that effectiveness or the lightning itself is that effective if it's drummed up to be. I, I know people who are really excellent players in it, and I know the majority of people who have unlocked the lightning simply because it's the lightning, and they want to own a piece of history in their own account, or at least have a playable version of something that they won't be able to see in real life. Unfortunately for me, Top Tier Jets is a bit of a arcade shooter. It really is. And the advent of Beyond visual range missiles, something which I'm not particularly knowledgeable on. I, I like to stick to my World War II stuff because that is a proven realm. I know what to do, how to play things properly. You roughly know, after playing the game for nearly eight years, you roughly get an idea of what you're up against. And the problem being is this is a World War II game with advanced mechanics. That's literally it. And the engine is going to struggle, especially if we're going to see F-14s, etc. I mean, it might not. It might be fine. But that's just my rough evaluation. Now, we've got a lock-on on F-4 over there. Are we going to fire one? Probably are. Let's have a look. He is flying into the sun, however. Our chance for locking was long gone. We could have easily had that guy there. A lot of little mistakes here. And this thing sort of turns into a basically support fighter. Basically bait, essentially. You are fighting things that you probably shouldn't be, and as you say, that 104 is completely just flying away. 
This is the point I want to make though, if you're not really paying attention, you're not necessarily going to do anything. And as a result, well, I'm not really paying attention, so I need to earn at least a little bit of silver. So we're going to destroy one grand unit. That's okay, there's an F100 up there and there's an F104. But we're not going to focus on him because directly on our six right now is that other F104 that turned around. As you can see, this thing gets a little lackluster in the turn. We do take a little bit of a hit. He sparks, thankfully. Is the team managing to get a missile off him? No. It looks like they missed. We're going to cook one up while we're in the turn. And hopefully, now that he's bled all his speed, this missile will absolutely obliterate him. And hopefully it does, because that F-104 is, well, it's something else, isn't it? I struggled to play Ace Combat 7 because there was too much information in your face all at once. And I have a feeling that as War Thunder progresses, especially at the top tiers, where they're going to be adding more and more stuff as we go along, it's going to be more and more difficult to sort of pay attention to what is actually going on in the battlefield. Those of you who do well on those fast-paced shooters, I'm certainly not one of them. I tend to be the guy that hangs back and does support roles. That's my thing. Uh, unfortunately, that missile goes nowhere. But as the game progresses, it's going to get faster and faster. That's the that's just how War Thunder is designed. Like, for example, speed. The lightning was a thing. A few patches ago, the F-104 ru ruled supreme just because it could outspeed any missile and do infinite amounts of damage. I've only just unlocked a few F-104s myself, but uh, again, paying attention is a good thing. I would have died to that uh, F-104 if that hadn't happened. Unfortunately, we do a stupid maneuver here. Watch this. I was sort of just experimenting with the roll rate and going, oh, look, there's an F-4. Let's just spray and pray him. Yeah, no, dead. <laughs> That's just what happens when you head on aircraft. And let me just show you what happens when you get distracted. Right, so I'm flying through, like, oh cool, there's a formation of AI bombers. Arados, let's see what it sounds like. You know, ironically, it sounds like we're in a Star Wars film. Although, that's not a bad thing. But this clip alone will probably show you, and it's a very short one, it's less than a couple of minutes. But now we've spotted our first target, a MiG-21. Unfortunately, that Mirage hasn't necessarily told us what else is that direction, considering I'm heading straight towards the enemy air spawn area. It's an SU-7. And just watch as the targets multiply and as the situation gets out of hand. Two targets, another MiG-21. Three targets, and a MiG-19. So if we can get a bead on the MiG-19 here, we might be able to. If he's clever enough, he will avoid doesn't really matter we get a critical hit on him and there's another MiG-21 in here that's when all of a sudden the whole entire enemy team is upon you and it's this point where you've rushed in early on straight off in the match I fire a missile on another MiG-21 I'm not necessarily paying attention to my surroundings I should be maneuvering when a missile comes and cleans me up but just take a look at the amount of red as I'm panning the camera around this is what the future of War Thunder is going to be fast-paced quick matches like that now, I wouldn't be surprised, given the way the game will be developing, but that we'll have to wait and see. Whether things get faster or slower is really dependent on the War Thunder's engine. That's probably something that is subject to change, obviously. Anyway, the Jaguar's not particularly useful in any kind of lineup, as far as I'm concerned. You don't see very many of them, although I do think this thing will be useful in ground forces. The Ordnance Loadhead is quite interesting, and for Ground Forces stuff, it might be pretty interesting. But the lack of radar really kills it for me. You can't necessarily track your targets. You do have a, a radar warning receiver, or RWR. Uh, and the neat thing about this vehicle is, well, you can see it right in the center of the screen right there. That map, which tells you where your friendlies are. It's quite a nice feature, I quite like that. Both Jaguars have this. The main difference between the two of them is really the guns and obviously the missile types. Uh, one has Aidens, whereas the other has, as I said at the start of the video. Even if the game is a little bit lackluster at the moment and matches feel really tight and, and sort of really small, I reckon a bigger selection of maps and a, a better focus on where units are placed and a larger battle scale might actually help top tier jets a bit more. That's why Spain is particularly popular, because there's lots of avenues and areas for you to actually hide and do things. Although, I heard from a particular source that Gaussian is not really doing any modelling themselves. They make, they outsource all the models. Uh, that costs an absolute fortune to, for them to do, so they focus on top tier content most of the time. That being said though, the only thing that they, I know that they 
for sure do in-house are map design. And that is something that I've been very critical of here about on the channel in the past. I can't stand the way that Garjan does their map design. It's one of the things that I hate the most. You know, from laneways that don't make any sense to maps that have terrible corridors. Uh, and everybody seems to know and has memorized where each player takes off from. It's a little bit uh, lackluster and the, the variety is not enough to justify, you know, grinding 390,000. Even if the matches are only like 3-4 minutes long, that's a lot of matches even if you're only getting a thousand to maybe 2,000 match, you know, research points a match that is. But really what perplexes me the most is the fact that Gaussian hasn't done anything to the existing map design. In fact, they're steadfast on having the same formula of three bombing points, two airfields, a bunch of ground forces in between. And then you fill that in with the maps that they export from ground forces. Right, a lot of the maps that they design for ground forces have air maps attached to them, and they just reuse those same assets to make bigger versions of those same maps. There's a heap of them, for example, they're really quite annoying. And oh, just look at this, this is satisfying. I managed to get the missile kill on that uh, 104. <laughs> Luckily I fired my missile just then because I wouldn't have got that kill, and that just shows you the determination that sometimes you have to really fight to the tooth and nail just to get kills in this sort of high-end environment. That being said though, there's not countermeasures for all aircraft, there is no flares for all aircraft, and ultimately I'd like there to be a different mindset and a different sort of play style applied to higher tiers. Well that's not going to happen for two reasons. One, Garjan hasn't developed the air mode or the game modes as a whole, where's Enduring Confrontation, for example. Uh, also, the way that the game plays this sort of higher pace is not comparable to any of the other tiers in fact it's a lot more quick it's it's in my, in my opinion it's a lot better in, in as a whole but as Gaussian continues to focus on higher tech and more sort of vehicles that's only going to delay the inevitable the game definitely does need a rebalancing but how much that's the kind of argument you've got to weigh up for yourself for example, is it worth them expanding upon maps making them larger? Would that solve the issue? Probably not, because you just rush in one direction, know where the enemy's airbase was, and possibly, you know, just dogfight like you used to. Again, Team Deathmatch was a term coined a couple of years back. It's sort of been a more popular thing as it goes along. The problem is, how do you make gameplay objectively entertaining and also have a player's incentive to keep playing. This obviously ties into the grind, the battle ratings, everything sort of falls into this neat sort of pile and it regurgitates itself on and on and on. The issues with top tier isn't exactly, I don't know, you could, you could go on about the servers, you could go on about missile tracking, you could go on the way that certain battle ratings feel. The ultimate end of the stick here is it's an ongoing process and it's ever changing, but it's really not changing. It's still the same, if you understand what I mean. Which is why I enjoy playing unique vehicles like the Mirage or maybe the J35, because at least there's some variety and not just MiG-21s and F4 Phantoms with spam rams. But again, a separate subject, and again, oh, I'm a terrible pilot, so who really cares anyway? 